Hello everybody, I'm Thomas and welcome back to another Solo Gaming Sunday this week, Colossal Edition, where I will be playing the RPG Colossal, which is a really cool solo uh, RPG that uh, takes place in a giant castle that's so big it's like its own world essentially. Um, so yeah, I'll be playing a bit of Colossal today, it should be a good time. Um, one thing that's pretty interesting about this game, I'll kind of get into it here in a second, but it doesn't really use dice. It only uses cards. Um, I have dice out because I've got Mythic here, so be using that. So I need some dice for that. But um, yeah, I'm excited to, to play this a bit. Um, today will probably be a bit of a shorter stream. Probably only going to stream for at least two hours. Um, usually I try to stream for around three. Today's going to be a little bit shorter. I'll probably only stream like two, two and a half. Um, but I still want to get streaming today, so... Here I am, and we're going to get into Colossal, a solo RPG written and illustrated by Niche and Gel. I think that's how you pronounce their name. Um, before I hop too much into this, I want to quickly talk about all the sources and different things I'll be using here today, because I am not just using Colossal. I have a couple of extra sources and tools that I'll be using that I want to quickly talk about before I start going through the rule book. So, um, firstly, you can see here I got the faith chart, the fate chart from Mythic Second Edition, Mythic Game Master Emulator Second Edition. I really enjoy Mythic. I've used it when I played Colossal in the past, and it worked pretty well. So I'm going to use it here today. Um, I mainly plan on just using the fate chart, but I also do have where is it? Uh, an adventure list for my threads and characters. Um, I'm also be just journaling my adventure on a solo, uh, on a piece of pa scrap paper. So I will be pretty much um, treating all my adventure and scenes. So I will also be keeping track of chaos ranking for mythic. That's about it. I do have um, this page here with actions and descriptors that comes with mythic, which I, I, I might use at some point. I have all the other pages off to the side for the different tables, but I don't really anticipate using those. Probably just the fate chart and the adventure list. And that's pretty much it. I might, I'll, I'll probably use this one time to time for the meaning tables for the action descriptors. So that is uh, source number one I'm using. Source number two, extra little thing, is can hardly play any RPG without including Table Fables and Table Fables 2. Great little set of books. I especially like just the name generator and Table Fables and the settlement generator and Table Fables 2. So I'll probably be using both of these um, at some point. And then the last little source I decided to use, which um, none of these are necessary or, or required. I just find myself liking to use them when I play this game. Uh, the last little thing I will be using is the D100 lands hex generator. Um, I like having a map. The more I, the, I want to use D100 in the past, I use it with Iron Sworn. And I like having a map and I like the way this works with generating a map with the hexes and whatnot. So I have printed out a little uh, hex map here that I will start sketching as I'm going along and trying to draw out this uh, big old castle. So yeah, I just want to quickly touch base on all those extra resources. So Mythic Second Edition, I am using Table Fables and Table Fables 2 and D100 lands for the hex generation. Um, I forgot to link all of that in the description. So if you're watching this live, I'll have it linked afterwards. But um, yeah, right now I kind of forgot to link it beforehand. I just have Colossal listed, um, linked in the description. So okay, I just want to get out of the way before hopping into the rules for Colossal. And this is a pretty straightforward RPG. Doesn't have a whole lot of rules, not super complicated. So I'm probably going to I'm going to probably uh, read through most of the rule book because there's just not that much to it. Uh, I'll just skim through parts and read through some of the other parts. So let's get into it. The rules for Colossal. Um, so there's a little section about what is a solo RPG. So it's a role playing game you play by yourself. That's that's what it just says in basically five paragraphs. Um, so the basic gameplay rules, I'll quickly read through this little part. So the game uses a standard pack of playing cards. Uh, to dictate what happens to your character and their adventure. I guess the little there's a little what do you need to play? So you just need a pencil, note paper, standard deck of cards, and a character sheet. 
Um, and the gameplay is split up into two phases. You have your exploration phase and your combat phase. Each of these phases, you'll draw a certain number of cards and check what you have drawn against tables in this book. And that's that's just up to you to just decide how you interpret the cards and the prompts and whatnot. Um, so yeah, this game has some really cool art on like the, the pages in between. Sorry, this is the one uh, little bit I am going to read all the way through is the world of Colossals. So you can see here it's a little bit of reading. So uh, you have to give me a second. Oh my gosh, this little like little white fuzz is driving me crazy. OK, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the world of Colossal that we'll be exploring here today. So the world of Colossal, the Colossal is an impossibly massive castle. The interior, which is so large that mountains, valleys, towns and cities and even oceans fill its rooms. The ceilings and roofs are so high they are beyond sight, shrouded by misty expanse of the sky that sits within its vaulted heights. Um, there seems to be no finding the exterior of the castle, though many adventurers have tried crossing continental distances only to reach the wall of another room. For those who have ventured past a wall, they find only more rooms on the other side, with new lands stretching far into the distance. That said, many features you would expect from the Colossal's normal size counterparts are present, such as staircases, windows, doorways, balconies, towering statues, burning braziers, pillars disappearing into the clouds, and long, gloomy corridors. No adventurer has yet to find their way to the rooftops, which is also called the battlements, which they suspect might grant them a view and a view that sheds some light on the true nature of the world. Maybe you will be the first? Although all manner of threats exist out in the wild, such as strange animals, beasts, and other barbaric and dangerous people, the greatest danger of all are the rooks. They are the huge hulking stone automatons that patrol somewhat mindlessly out in the wilds of Colossal's rooms. That is until they are disturbed. Every rook is different, there are no two that are the same, and they are the only source of magic in the world. So as such, they are something of a target to hunters looking for tech they can salvage, artifacts they can sell, or magic crystals to grant them strange and unpredictable powers. But only if they can bring one down. Every room in the Colossal seems sees daylight thanks to its braziers, a huge burning light source hanging impossibly high in the rafters. At night, the braziers dim to a gentle white light. No one knows how or why, but it is said the rooms have their night while others have their day. High atop columns and nestled in the ceilings rafters with the gargoyles, strange and winged reptilian creatures that sometimes swoop from high to pick off the lonely, unsuspecting travelers far from civilization. Little is known about them, but it is said that when a gargo gargoyle attacks you, it carries you to where it lives. Many believe that when you die, your soul is drawn to the front gate of the Colossal, a place immeas immeasurably far from any other known location. The journey of death begins by crossing the moat and discovering the lands beyond. This is but a story, but perhaps it holds some truth. Explorers talk of many strange lands far out in the Colossal. Wild jungles spreading up massive staircases, ice or polar, icy polar regions encasing huge human skeletons and glaciers, thin corridors between rooms, and arid and dry filled with sand, winds blowing sandstorms through huge windows. Explorers have theorized that some areas of Colossal have multiple floors before one reaches the mythical battlements. Forests stacked upon deserts, stacked upon oceans, stacked upon mountains and canyons. Life, nature, even people always find a way to live in the most impossible circumstances, and the Colossal is, vastly, is, is vast beyond imagining. Any combination of lands, and peoples, and castles itself are possible. Who knows what you will find when you step out to discover what secrets it holds. So, a lot of reading, but that gives you an idea of the world of the Colossal. It's like got some cool art. There's like one of the rooks in the background. I think that's one thing I really like most about this game. And that's one reason I wanted to kind of read through this all. I think it has a really interesting setting and it's unique, you know, it's not just like your typical fantasy Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, I'm in a town and I'm going to go kill a dragon. It's like, no, you're in a castle and like a big old castle. You don't know how you got there. You don't know where the castle is. And you got these giant rook creature automaton constructs. They're just going to kill you if you mess with them. So, um, whoa, sounds great. Yeah, no, I agree. How's it going, Sander dude? Hope you're having a good Sunday and yeah, just yeah, I, I really like the uh, 
the setting of this game. It's probably one of the things I like the most about it is just because it's pretty unique. So that's a little bit about the world of Colossal. So creating a character. Creating a character is the first and most important step of your journey. The character is the point of view you will, will be writing the journal from. Uh, your character probably isn't like the other, every other... Let me restart that. Your character probably isn't like the everyday citizens of Colossal who are happy to stay in their village, farming or working, never setting foot beyond the village boundary. You're an adventurer, and something calls you to go beyond what is safe and what is known, to step out into the often magical and sometimes dangerous lands of Colossal. So your character must have the following. You have a calling, a nature, a class, and a weapon. So a calling is it's kind of what it sounds like. It's your quest. You know, it's as simple. It could be as simple as to to explore and discover what lays beyond the perimeter of your family's farm, or it could be personal, chasing after someone who wronged you. Um, so you need to come up with a calling. Your nature is just what is kind of what governs how your characters react to what they discover and who they meet. Maybe they're hot-headed and quick to act without thinking, or perhaps they're cunning and sensitive or protective. So calling you gotta figure out what you want to do and nature kind of what your characters like and then you have your class which is your unique abilities that um governs kind of how your character explores and fights so there's not a crazy amount of classes i think there's only four maybe five i forget not not a whole lot of options but uh, the classes are pretty neat um and then finally a weapon this could be anything you imagine and it's completely up to you in the combat system weapons don't actually have like any stats that govern their power they're simply just one of the ways you can attack and um yeah it's your opportunity to describe how awesome your weapon is and how, how it does its damage so you could just have like a sword an axe a catapult nunchucks a spiky mace a hand cannon you know whatever you want as long as it says yeah you keep your technology level roughly medieval so there are tables that you can I was going to say roll for. I'm so used to saying rolling on tables, but no, in these, you draw a card and then you reference the tables. So there's, if you don't have an idea of what your character's calling is going to be and what they're going to do out in the world, uh, you can draw a card and just reference this table. They have some pretty nice uh, little backstory generators and kind of uh, calling ideas, which is nice. And then you have uh, your character's nature to come up with, which you can draw a card to reference the table, or you could just pick it out yourself and then the character's classes. So the two main things your character's class dictates is your combat score and your exploration score, which is basically just a number from one to five. And your character your class kind of determines what that will be. Um, so let me quickly skim through all the classes for you. So you got the armed. The armed quite literally have an arm from a rook connected to them via a complex ritual attuning its intentions to them. Uh, the armed are proficient in melee combat and are highly capable adventurers. They're warriors. An armed adventurer could have any type of arm. It can have a blade, a hand, a cannon, a strange machine that users don't understand yet. The arm has a hand or the ability to hold items. It can carry an additional weapon if you don't have one. So that's the armed class. Pretty neat. They have an exploration score of three and a combat score of four. Um, I'll kind of get into what those mean, but the more, the higher your score is, the more cards you get to draw to kind of decide from i guess so there's a bunch of character traits and how to create an armed character they kind of do this for each of the classes uh, the next one is the followed the followed have a small rook companion like a pet or a familiar that follows you that follows them and their commands these rook wings are found in the cores of larger rooks and as yet it is not known why uh, they display a base level of sentience akin to that of a dog or a cat and can learn and can form deep and personal bonds with their human companions. The, follows, the followed are excellent rangers, pathfinders, and navigators. They have a really maxed out exploration score, an okay combat score of three. Um, I, I think this is probably the class they'll play, spoiler, but not sure yet. Then you have the helmed, who has an exploration score of two and a combat score of five. Uh, the helms harvest a piece of strange machinery from the very core of a rook and using rituals and a real working real working understanding of the crystals, patterns, and stones, they're able to create a helm that can be worn and operated, granting the magical abilities of the rook it was harvested from. So this is the main magic user in this game. If you're trying to play more of like a wizard type character, um, you know, you can... Uh, you can play the helm, then you get some cool magical abilities. Then you have the mounted. So they have 
maxed out exploration to combat the mounted ride an adapted mechanism taken from rook parts as a vehicle or mount to allow them easier traversal across land and sea of colossal typically this involves taking a part of the rook responsible for its locomotion disconnecting it from its main body and turning it into something that can be operated with crude controls mechanisms and levers the mounted the mounted mount can vary from a horse-like creature to boats and even bicycles so it's your your traveler it's pretty cool uh, those are the classes so like i said not a crazy amount of options but i think the ones listed are pretty cool uh, this goes into a little bit about the magic in this game. Um, basically, I'll, I'll quickly just read like the first paragraph or two. So magic is a unique power, uh, is a power unique to rooks and only, and it comes from stones bonded in ancient circuitry known as rook stones found deep within their bodies. Rook stones come in three variations. You have electric, rumble, and ice. Every rook will have one of these three magical quantities or no magical abilities because its rook stone is broken or missing. Um, so that's... That's that, and those are the three main magic types. So, got some more cool art of like this desert room. I, well, they got some good art in this book. I'll say that much. I really like these little kind of half. I guess I mean if you if you had the actual PDF, this would be like a half page art, but um, it looks pretty slick. So then, okay, exploration rule. How do you how do you explore? How do you play this game? I talked about at the beginning. Mainly talks about the exploration phase and the combat phase. So quickly talk about how you explore. So exploring the lands of Colossal involves using a deck of ordinary playing cards, which I got up there, uh, to realize what your character sees and encounters. You draw a number of cards equal to your character's exploration score and set them down in front of you. In this exploration phase, um, oh, this is the phase, exploration phase is how every chapter of your adventure starts. The color suit and number of the cards you have drawn dictate what you discover. It is up to you how you link these elements together into a story of a mythic adventure. It says mythic, but that's not not this mythic, but just like mythic. Um, you can see each adventure phase as a day of your adventure or longer if it suits your story and your journal. So if you encounter something to fight, then the resolution of that combat incurs in a combat phase. Some exploration phases may not have combat encounters at all, or your character might choose to avoid it. But if you do choose to fight, the combat phase can follow, uh, can fall anywhere in the exploration phase. So it could be right at the beginning, it could be in the middle, the end, you might not have combat at all, who knows. Um, and you just keep exploring through the exploration and combat phases, draw, just keep drawing cards from the deck, moving them into a discard pile. Once you reach the end of the pile, start a new pile. Um, and there's just tables that you reference. Another cool art, I don't want to skim past that. Look at that, that's like a cool looks like more of a mounted character that's just see like the cool roof like the the rafters that the gargoyles weep from yeah it's got some cool art we keep saying that but i think it does and it's a cool setting so um yeah there's tables to reference to see what you see um red cards are organic things peoples and creatures while black cards are scenic things structures and objects then if you draw a jack queen or king though no matter the suit or the color you follow the table below and when it comes to a rook, you can decide whether to fight it or try to sneak past it. If you choose to fight it, you're doing some combat. So yeah, a jack will always give you an item, which is pretty handy. Uh, a queen is a medium rook and a king card is a massive rook. Um, if there's a little table here that you can, I keep wanting to say roll on. You don't roll on this. You could draw a card to, to reference this items table. So if you're supposed to get an item from a thing and it doesn't specify the item, you can draw a card and just have this as a random like item generator. Uh, there's also some great little event table here for you could just, if you're trying to spice up the adventure, you have a little events table, which is pretty cool. And uh, some more cool art, the ocean. I don't think we'll uh, it probably explore too much today, but there is a whole section on ocean encounters. Um, because the ocean's big and it's it might be something you want to explore at some point. So yeah, there's this whole, you, know, you got the page here. There's a whole ocean encounters table, a weather table. So I'm not gonna go over that because I don't plan on doing much ocean stuff today, but whatever. Uh, here's a cool little picture of one of the cities in Colossal. You see, there's a lot of rook kind of parts in the background and whatnot. Um, yeah, so the cities in Colossal are, 
or just like in incredible places with a starkly higher level of civilization and apparent technology advancements than the villages and wildlands of the rooms beyond their boundaries. So these astonishing places with a large scale use of defeated rook bodies and their internal mechanisms and magical technologies. So um, yeah, they're a bustling place of trade and culture and security. So cities are a thing that can happen. Um, and there's like, you can use, every city has like a hunter's guild, a tavern, a merchant and a housing district. And then you can draw extra cards to see what extra stuff your city has. And there's little sections on each of these. So hunter's guild is kind of just like, a, it's kind of like what it sounds like. It's hunter's guild that you can go to, to get quests to kill rooks, which is kind of cool. Um, the housing district is where people live most of the time. You got the Rookling Crash, which is like this, I don't want to say Pokemon, but it's like you could trade out your Rooklings for other Rooklings, and I don't know if you can make them battle and stuff, but um, I think it's, I don't really know what that is. You got a tavern to rest at, you can house for sale. There could be a house for sale that you could buy if you want to, and then certain benefits and whatnot if you do buy a house, which is pretty neat. Um, including, like, if you buy a house, you can fast travel. Sweet. I, I don't know if I've... I don't know if any... I don't know if any RPG, tabletop RPG that I've played has a fast travel mechanic, which is interesting because a lot of video game RPGs do. Like, first thing that comes to mind is like Fallout, Skyrim. You know, those games, once you've been, visited a location, you can just fast travel there. So that's kind of interesting. The fast travel, at least in this game, it only works when coming back to the city, not when going somewhere. You can like basically hire a caravan to fast travel. But that's only if you have a house, so one of the perks of living in the city is you get the ability to fast travel back to the city which i think is pretty cool um there's a merchant that can or that will be in every city and they have different items that cost different amount of treasures or whatever um not gonna go over that stuff too much more cool art look at that that's one of the armed uh armed class people so battlements there's a whole area on the battlements like the roof uh the roof area i'm just gonna skim past that because like you're not really supposed to read it until you get up to the roof area. So there's extra table and stuff for that. Um, yeah, I wonder how that'll play out. Yeah, like I said, it's 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 kind of cool. I don't know. I've never seen tabletop one use fast travel, but um, yeah. So then you got a little map of the known room lands, which I don't plan on using because I'm just going to make my own map with the hex generator. But if you want to have some map, you know, you can have you could just print this out and it's pretty, pretty neat. Uh, has some named places and stuff. So, OK. Last section, I think it's the last section, is combat and how it works. And to be honest, it's pretty straightforward, but um, still pretty cool. So when combat begins, you draw a card for your opponent. And um, when this happens, the combat phase starts and the rules on the next page happen. So one of the first things you do is you create your opponent. Um, if they're a person, you create them by basically drawing a card or yeah, just one card to see like what their intention is and what their weapon is and stuff like that. If they're a rook, you draw, I think also just one or two cards. Yes, yeah, so you draw um, one card that dictates what type of magic this rook has and then also the body type, which is either going to be an attack or a defensive style. Um, the body type dictates, I don't know, I'll read this, dictates, dictates, <laughs> why are you The body type dictates the sh shape and look of the rook the kind of attack it would use, and if it does a physical attack, and also what kind of arm you get as reward. Um, an attack arm might be a blade or a chain, a defense arm might be like a shield or an air blaster. So that's what that does. Um, when creating your opponent, then you also draw, for a rook at least, a second card to see how they, so it's attack or defensive, then what type of weapon do they have? Is it ranged or melee? And then finally you get to see what kind of rewards you get for killing them for slaying the rook um so that's that's pretty much that so then how does actually fighting work okay so once you have done that part of creating your opponent you know what you're fighting what type of magic they have what type of body type and weapon type they have you can actually start fighting them so to do this you draw a number of cards equal to your combat scores that's why having a higher combat score is helpful because those are kind of your card choices that you get to choose from. So then you have to check based on who you're fighting, what the combat score of your opponent is. It's either one, three or five, depending on if it's another person, 
a medium rook or a massive rook. And then it just fighting involves countering your opponent's attack card with cards from your face up options. So you basically will go back and forth. So I would start by drawing a card for my opponent and be like, okay, so this, this rook I'm fighting is going to attack me with like an eight of hearts. And then my turn, I have a look at the card options I have to choose from, and then I pick one of those to try to play against that rook's card. Um, so to counter it, you must allocate one of your options. A higher number will beat the attack. If you don't have a higher number card, you must allocate one with a lower and mark a wound. Uh, this proceeds one enemy attack at a time until the enemy has used up all of their cards according to their combat score. Then... Ba, 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 ba. Oh, and this the card also dictates what type of attack they do, whether it's an unarmed weapon, magic, or creative attack. These don't actually flavor-wise do anything. They're just... Or they, Mechanically-wise, they don't do anything. They're just for flavor. So the two things, though... So you want to try to just beat their number, but there can be a clash. So if your card equals that of the incoming attack, then pretty much nothing happens. You just block the damage. Don't take any wounds. You don't do any damage. Uh, there's also critical hits. So if you counter, if your counter attack beats the incoming attack and is the same suit, it's a critical hit. So it decreases the opponent's remaining attacks by one, which is pretty sweet. Um, so yeah, if I were to have a nine, I could beat this eight. But if I had the nine of hearts, I could beat this eight and have a critical attack. So, uh, whoops, I skipped ahead there. So you win in combat if you defeated the enemy majority. If, the, if you defeated their a majority of their incoming attacks. So for example, if you're fighting a medium rook, you need to defeat two out of its three incoming attacks. If you win a combat against a rook, you get to take the prize and add a point to your exploration or combat, which is pretty cool. If you win against a human, then you just get a treasure. And that's that. So wounds, talked about them a second ago. What are they? Well, at the end of combat, you have to count up the number of wounds your character has taken. And for each wound you take, you must remove a point from as either exploration or combat. So kind of think about what forms these wound takes and what kind of they affect your character. But um, yeah, your, your scores can't go higher than five, but taking wounds, you have to lower one of them. And uh, if you lose, so if your opponent lives and you receive, you receive no penalty. So any wounds received in this combat still will take effect. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And when you complete a, when a battle, with a battle complete, your adventure continues, yeah. So that's that. Here's a pretty cool picture too. I like this one a lot. It's a little diagram of like what some of the insides of these rooks look like. Because a lot of the time, especially if you're gonna be fighting a massive rook, like there's a lot of different rooms that you're not gonna just be fighting them outside. You're most likely gonna have to try to infiltrate the rook and take them down from the inside. So I kind of like this little comics drawing schematic, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty cool looking. Gives you a little bit of an idea of what the rooks are like. And that's pretty much it. That's not pretty much it. That is it. I mean, we're at the journal. That's the entry example. And then the Kickstarter backers. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, this is, I, did, I guess I didn't explicitly say this. This is mostly a journaling, journaling game. I'm going to go pretty light on the journaling. Just kind of keep bullet points. And yeah, there's a character sheet. And that's, that's, that's it. Let me set this off to the side because I don't think I really need this. I have some stuff printed out for the most part. It should be all right. So I guess I'll get going with my character creation, which I'm going to need that back immediately after I put it away <laughs> to do character creation. I don't know why I just set it down, even though I knew I was going to need it. So let me go back to the character creation part and let's do this real fast. Then I'll kind of create my world I'll be playing in. I'll probably do a little bit of um map generation to kind of make my starting area and kind of have a place to start and then uh go from there so first off my character needs a name um i guess i should put out there that i already i kind of have an idea of the character i want to play i think i'm going to play um some gal i don't know her name yet but she her focus is pretty much going to be on trying to figure out what's going on in this world. Like we're in a big castle 
who made this castle? How did we get here? Who's controlling the, the braziers in the sky and dimming them? Is it magic? Is it... Was, what's going on here? So I think that's going to be my character's focus. It's kind of just like trying to learn the secrets of Colossal. Maybe not... Maybe she's trying to get to the battlements at the top or to, to try to actually get out of the castle. But I think that's not... It's maybe like a part of her journey. I think it's mainly going to be just trying to figure out like the truths in this world and trying to figure out like who's, whose castle is this? How did it get here? Who's controlling the, the light in the sky? Where would the gargoyles? Where did they come from? So I think her whole character concept and kind of her main calling also is going to be trying to just figure out the secrets of Colossal. The or Maybe I'll say the secrets uh, of the origin. A colossal this is the colossal it's a castle so that'll probably be her calling and also um a thread on the mythic threads list it's just figure out i'll just put colossal origins which um yeah i don't anticipate actually finishing that thread i guess in like Iron Sworn or Starforge terms, this is kind of like my um, background vow. You know, something that's going to take a long time, kind of her main, that's going to be her calling, and that's kind of what's driving her to go out and explore the world and seeing what's out there. So, yeah, that's her calling. Which I'm not going to really... I just made it... I guess I could shot it down on here, too. Um, uncover. Colossal... Oops. Origins. Whatever. I wrote that weird. Okay, so she, yeah, she's just trying to figure out, like, what? how did we get here? Why are we here? Why are we in a castle? What's going on? Because, like, it's a castle. It's not like that thing is just <laughs> nature made. Like, it's not like, you know, yeah, some just natural occurring phenomena. There's a man-made castle that these people are living in and there's these gargoyles and these lights being controlled in the sky to give it like a day-night cycle so uh okay let's figure out a name for my character i will be playing which table fables so, love this little book uh so i'm just gonna use the name generator real fast so what was that 72 so 72 all right my character's name will be pira Piera. Piera? P I E R A. Piera. Okay. It's a, it's a good name. Good name. Uh, class. I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but I think for my character's concept, I think what works best is probably the followed. Well, there's. Yeah, I don't know. Because I like the idea of having a little companion. Um. The helm could, like, make sense, but I don't know if I really want to add in the helmed aspect. The mountain, the mounted is pretty cool. But that seems like it's, the mounted is definitely more exploration focused, which Piera is definitely going to be wanting to explore. But like I kind of said, it's more, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not like her primary goal. It's just something that she kind of does to help her get there. Like, it's not the end. It's like a thing to get to the her goal i guess does that make sense so um i think the followed makes the most sense for this class or for this character so we will go ahead and do that so the followed um usually very capable explorers proficient in tracking survival and navigation and combined with their rookling companions have to have a sense of direction and knowledge about the world they are equipped more than equipped to navigate the lands of colossal um, so yeah, this mainly, this page just talks about the class itself and kind of how to play them and when you're designing them, like what to think about, which I've already kind of got figured out. So, um, but I do want to see how fighting with Rookling has come into play. So cause we, I have a Rookling that I'll have like, we'll have a body and magic characteristics of the large Rook it was harvested from to create a first Rook into creating your opponent rook section in the combat rules and either choose the body or magic characteristics or draw a card to generate them randomly. See, let's quickly draw a card to see what kind of rook I have. Whoa, king of diamonds. Okay, 
So in the Rook section, we flip back to this area. Forward a little bit more. Oh my goodness, it's all the way like at the end. So here we go. So this is going to be, what did I need to figure out? The, an ice type. So an ice magic was also defensive body style. Is that all I needed was just type and the body style? Let me double check. Uh, yeah, that seems like it's, yeah, ice and a defensive body style. So that's pretty cool. I have a defensive ice rookling. Um, okay. Maybe I'll put that, I don't know, here. Ice type rookling. Cool. Um, and I feel like I need a little name for my companion. So once again, table fables to the rescue with its name generator. I will maybe give it, uh, where's, that? where's the actual names? There they are. Just generate another name real fast. 48. So my little rookling is named, uh, oh, it's gonna, 40, how many year old this is? I don't know. I don't know how much I like this names for rooklings. Um, Maya. Okay. Maya the rookling. Cool. So I still need to figure out my nature of my character, which there is a table for, I might just pick, I might not roll. I might just pick depending on my options. So it's either happy, go lucky, patient, brave, introspective. You know what? I'm actually going to, I'm not going to pick. I'll let, I'll let the deck of cards decide. And it is the 10 of spades. So my character's nature is larger than life, tells exaggerated stories, roars with laughter. All right, that's that seems like a pretty good flavor for the nature of my character. So let me write that down real fast. Larger than wife. Tells exaggerated stories and roars with laughter. Okay. Sweet. Oh, and then I need to fill in my, I was like, I'm missing something. Yeah, I need to fill in my exploration score and combat score. So with the followed, I start with um, exploration of five. So I'm maxed out and combat, I start with three. I'm um, just, you know, I'll go ahead and fill the boxes in, because why not? can change throughout the game, but for now, I think it's fine. Go ahead and fill those in. I put a little mark next to the spots I start with, just so I remember, because there's some stuff that lets you, even though you'll be gaining and losing points, that kind of can help you revert back to normal. So I put those down, and I think that's pretty much it. I don't think there's much else to do. I guess maybe I could grab myself a weapon. That would probably be good. Um, Cause I feel like I kind of need a weapon. And fighting with, so do, 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 do. Let me also see this. So fighting with Rooking involves fighting in a partnership with your character will have a weapon in their hand. When you do an unarmed or magic attack, this might be a moment where you command a Rookling. Okay. So we'll just say I have some like long sword as my main weapon but then whenever i yes do I, I whenever i do an unarmed or magical attack is when i can kind of command the rookling to to help me out which is pretty cool so okay i think at this point my character is fully created uh there's a little section for looks either i'm guessing you could just jot down some words to describe your looks or even sketch out a little portrait of your characters i'm gonna do neither because i don't know don't really feel like it so all right before I hop into this. There's a couple more things I want to set up. First being, um, I want to get this adventure list filled out a little bit more before I actually start doing some stuff. So I want to get maybe two more characters added and two more threads added. Something like that. So um, 
One of the characters, I guess, can be a settlement. And specifically, I'm gonna make a, a small village, not a city. So I'm not gonna be using the city generation in here yet. I'm gonna make a city nearby, but where my character will be starting is just in probably the, her hometown or wherever she like grew up and whatnot. Um, so let me get a name for what her hometown is and we'll make that one of the first uh, characters because character doesn't necessarily mean it has to be like a person. It could be like an entity, like a town. Um, so her town that she is starting in is Elk, Count Elk County. Elk County, okay, that's <laughs> okay. So Elk County. Then I always want, okay, what do I want? Another two more threads and um, another character. So I think the other character will be some person that gave, I already forgot my own character's name, Pira. Pira a quest that she is currently, we're gonna kind of start in media res uh, when I actually start playing. So I want a quest that she is maybe not necessarily in the middle of, but it has at least started. So let me figure out what that quest is gonna be and who gave it to her. So let's 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 get a name first of who gave her this quest and then we'll figure out what exactly it is she's doing. So let me roll on my names table. I'll just say it's uh, we're on the male name table. 58, so someone's named Matthew gave her this quest. All right, so we'll put him down as a, a character. And then what else, what else? I do want another character on there at some point. Maybe we'll make it, make it like her family or maybe like a friend or someone she, okay, now I kind of like the idea of maybe adding in like somebody that, uh, like a friend that is also trying to go down like a similar path of who's also interested in learning about the secrets of the origins. And maybe they're like childhood friends who, you know, speculated together about where they came from and what, you know, where this castle came from. And now that they're a bit more grown up, you know, she's actually going out in the world and doing this and who knows about the friend. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't, but I kind of like that idea that they're like childhood friends that shared a similar goal. Um, yeah, that seems like a good, good idea for another character. So let me generate one more name for another character and then we'll see what the quest is that Matthew gave us. So 46, uh, Josephine. Josephine, okay. Josephine. So Josephine is uh, Piera's childhood friend that she yeah, grew up with and they both shared kind of a similar, maybe not dream, but just like curiosity about what this castle is and where it came from, who built it, where the gargoyles came from, what the braziers in the sky, how are they changing and what's going on, you know? So, okay, so we got all of that. Um, I guess the last thing I wanna do then is figure out some quests that Matthew gave to us that we're kind of in the middle of right now. So there is a bit of a, I might just swipe some stuff from the book here because in the city of Colossal, section in the hunter's guild is where you can go to get quests so uh, do, 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 do. but this is just for slaying rooks which i don't i kind of want to do something else because I mean, rooks are definitely going to come up at some point so i don't know if i just want to immediately start with that or not um i kind of want to like you know maybe build up to it so let me think about this for a hot second about what would be a good i mean I would just go ahead and use Mythic to try to come up with some idea here. So let me stroll a couple times on this and get some get some ideas flowing. So we have 26, Deceive, Energize, or Deceive, Fully Deceive, Gracefully Deceive, and Deceive, Energize, let me get another word going here. Deceive, Energize, Separate. Separate and deceive, separate, energize. What was the other word I rolled? Fully separate. See, that doesn't really. Um, I like separate though. Let me keep, keep rolling just some words to like combine something that makes sense. 
Uh, 75 is release. Separate and release. That doesn't really work good together. Release and energize. That could be something, you know, separate, energize. Lots of words. I <laughs> feel like I'm almost there making something here. 63, neglect. I guess I also do have this table down here. But not, I don't really like the other ones as much. 63, it's like official. What is that? I guess I, I think I read that dice wrong. Whatever. Uh, 42, expose. Okay, I think I got enough words. I can start. Expose, energize, separate. What was this last one? Expose, and we do one more to match with expose, because I kind of like that one. 55, expose and inform. Okay. So obviously, expose and inform leads me to believe I'm doing something where I'm trying to expose someone and trying to tell someone about something someone is doing, I guess. Um, so let me maybe try to roll a descriptor to help. I don't know mature so so i'm trying to inf inform expose and inform of something that's mature and festive what the <laughs> maybe, not, maybe not festive mature and fearful okay um inform and it expose so like inform I don't think that has anything anything to do with like a rook. Like expose. This makes me think it's like a person and like a, another person like feuding or something. Um, so maybe I'm just doing something uh, like outside of Elk County, um, like not in in the town or in the village, but <clears throat> you know in the area around. Expose and energize. Man, I'm struggling to come up with something good here. Uh, I wrote a lot of words though. Expose. What was the other one? Um, I'm just gonna keep rolling. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep rolling. I probably could do something with that, but I don't know. Protect and what else we got? I just roll the same thing. So I protect and release. Um, but then like protect and release. What would I be protecting? Seventy nine something rare protect and release something rare okay i kind of like that protect and release something rare and mundane that doesn't really work well it could be hmm. okay I, I i do like this protect and release something that's rare i think i can work with that so what would i be protecting what would we be releasing? Obviously, it's the same thing. I'm imagining it's like some... I'm just throwing this out there because there's like weird creatures. So it could be something like some rare type of ember wolf. Okay, it's like a wolf, but it's like a flame wolf, right? And then this wolf has come into Elk County, which the village is based in a forest. So they don't like the idea of this ember wolf just running around. Um, so this thing is pretty rare. So I think I have been tasked with trying to capture this Ember Wolf and then release it somewhere else. They don't want me to kill it because they're rare. And I don't know, maybe there are some people in the town that like, think of this is not maybe a good sign, but they're like killing, killing an Ember Wolf is bad luck. So you don't want to do that. So I think, um, yeah, that sounds good that I'm trying to capture and release wasn't that that's was, that was pretty much the words right i forget but it's something like along those lines i'm trying to yeah okay i, I forget all the, the the actual um it was release it was protect and release so yeah i need to protect okay maybe yeah the, the other part of it is like i need to protect the wolf because maybe it's already caused trouble in elk county and some people are not happy about that like someone's shed got burnt down because this wolf was sniffing around it accidentally caught it on fire so some people want this wolf dead a lot of people are like no this thing's pretty rare and you don't want to mess with you don't want to get ember wolves on your bad side they're they seem like they're they're not being aggressive towards the town they're just uh kind of playing dumb so we'll say that uh yeah i need to um yeah protect and release protect 
release ember wolf is I, I guess what i'm calling it i just i just came up with that but I, that sounds good to me um because i think there are like there's the only source of magic in this game is the rooks but there are also at least in my mind weird and fantastical creatures you know we got the gargoyles they're coming in and swooping down so i think an ember wolf is not out of the question especially because i'm considering this a, a rare creature so it's not like these are just common you know in every day so okay we got a character we got a couple characters on my character list we got a couple threads on the thread list making progress so i think the last thing to do is i do want to sketch out just a real quick map at least get some um hexes here generated just so i know what the world not the whole world not because you know this class this castle is big who knows how big um heck of a lot bigger than i imagine it could fit on this paper but at least gives us something so to start i'm gonna roll what do i need a d d8 and a d10 to get some coordinates let's grab two random dice six and three okay so one two three four five six and one two three right there oh five oh two that is where ember or what i call it elk county is elk county maybe i should have made these hexes a little bit bigger whatever it's not the end of the world i don't think and then i'm just i think because i already said it um i'm gonna kind of lock in that um elk county is a uh a forest biome so we draw a little house here just for representing we got a settlement and then we'll actually get into um the game quickly just color this in with my colored pencils pencil and don't 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 expect any crazy art or or anything like that i like just doing basic maps just to give me an idea of what's going on and help paint the picture in my mind of oh, okay if i'm fighting a massive rook you know if i'm fighting them in a desert biome versus a mountain biome versus a forest biome are gonna be completely different battles so um yeah so we're starting in elk county and i also want to draw up at least a little bit of a coastline so i'm going to roll a d4 so that's one, two, three. So we're going to have a coastline going along the bottom here. Essentially, each of these squares, I have to roll a D6. I believe it's on a one or a two is when I um, do the thing. Yeah, it's on a one or a two is when the the land tile actually becomes an ocean tile. So I'm going to do this real, real fast, starting with this tile here. So that will become an ocean. That will become an ocean. <laughs> this one's not. Um, I guess I can mark this with a W. W. That one's not. Nope. 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 That's a good roll on that. Nope. And the last one. Yes. Okay. So we're going to have, yeah, an ocean on the bottom part here. And where's my... Looking for the good color pencil. There we go. Blue. Um, so something like... Yeah, I don't know. Have a, just a decent coastline. I, I also want to do this because, like I kind of mentioned, um, there is a whole section in this book about ocean encounters, which I haven't really read through and done much with personally, so probably won't get to it today. But I want to leave the option open in case I do feel like it. So I quickly color in this little bottom section here, and then we'll be actually on our way. This is just more ocean more ocean more ocean and it kind of comes inwards a little bit like that all right cool guess you can't really <clears throat> see the bottom there but there you go there's the map and i think that's pretty much all i want to do i could i'm kind of half debating um well first let me do this let me roll d6 and we got a three so one two three i'm gonna have a a road going this way from here so we have a road going that way there probably also would be a river somewhere um so we'll just go ahead and say that there's one like right next to the, the town and i'm like adding this in so it's gonna look pretty bad but um hopefully you get the gist i'm not going for 
art points here, but I feel like also if it's a town, it's got to have a river. It doesn't have to, but you know, most settlements are going to be near some source of water because it's, it's, uh, it's a little important for people, I guess. So yeah, I'm kind of debating. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't mind. Um, I'm going to do two things before starting. I kind of do want to go around the center hex and just generate these few areas around the town because I imagine I have some idea of what's around us and then let me do this other part first because the other thing I want to do is just mark on the map somewhere where there is a known city because I do want to I haven't since playing this game I haven't actually messed with the cities yet and generating one so I wouldn't mind uh doing that today at some point and hitting up a city so let me go ahead and just put one somewhere on the map and uh hopefully I'll be able to visit here at some point so let me Get a name for this place. It is 6 and 11, so it is going to be called Colony Hills. Okay, and then I will roll a D8 plus a D10 to figure out where on the map Colony Hills is, just generating like a random, um, what's it called? Like a, a random coordinate on the map, I guess is the word I was looking for. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So right about here is where Colony Hills is. I'll just draw like a couple of couple of houses to indicate like this isn't just a town it's a city so that's a big deal all right and then yeah last thing i wanted to do which just will take a second but i want to go ahead and do it is yeah generate each of these hexes around my starting hex so i have a little bit more than just a single hex to actually start with um with playing so let me go ahead and do that real fast so let me start with the one right above and see what i get here let me get my little Thing a little bit more in the shot, I think. Just to make it easier to read. So 76 is going to be just a water hex right above. Um, okay, interesting. I'll fill that in here in a second. 34, I'm just going to keep going clockwise around. 34, this is going to be a... Uh, it's a grass. Or not grass, it's a forest, I mean. And it does have a river going through it, so... We'll just have it, and it comes out to the right, so we'll kind of have the river go like something like that, maybe? I don't know. Just kind of cutting through the middle of it. And I'll just draw some really bad trees here, but whatever. Next one down here is 84, so that is a um, another forest. 84. Yeah, it's another forest. A river continuing which doesn't really matter and then roads but there's no roads to worry about right oh yeah there are because right here so there's a, the roads kind of just do like a y-shaped thing so one road kind of goes there and then bu, 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 one road kind of continues straight down that way and then the other kind of forks off that way so kind of a weird looking road there but uh, it's got a couple paths going a couple different ways and this is also a forest. So I will color all of these in in a second to make it easier to see. But when we go ahead and keep going around, 10 here is, uh, what is that symbol? I totally forget, beginning of a road. Okay, so this is a beginning of, the, well, we already have a road. So it's just continuing and going up this way, I guess. And then the river, kind of comes through, crosses, and then goes out like that. A little bit of a winding river, but that's cool. And this is also a, a forest. I keep getting, it keeps rolling like the, the biome type is pretty much the same as the previous, so a lot of forest, but that's okay. I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, 16, that is going to be not a forest, right? This is a mountains and it would be a start of a road, but there's already a road. And then we're going to have this road kind of go down that way. And yeah, this is just mountains, and mountains and mountains. OK, one more tile. I'm going to color these in and then we'll have a map created and actually start playing. <laughs> so 64, this is going to be a wasteland type. Uh, it does have a river. So we'll go. Uh, sorry, just trying to figure out how I want to put the river would we'll do something like that I think and then it doesn't have any roads so just drawing some little sand 
and cool. It's gonna give me like two seconds while I color this in. I want to be able to see this beautiful map. Okay, the river. Or else we got the river going down this way. Yikes, that is some rough coloring. <laughs> and then we have this water tile up here. So right to our north, this is like some, it could be part of a coastline or it could be like a lake, but there's a huge body of water like right to the north of this town, which is interesting. Then that's all I need for that. Let me grab this and do the little wasteland area real fast. I, I like having a map. It doesn't need to be anything complex. And I've since using this D100 lands, um, I, I, I quite like it. So it's nice. It's nice being able to know where I'm going. Now, obviously, um, I don't, at least in my mind, like my character doesn't have a map, but they have you know, an idea of where they're going, but I, at least as a player, just like having a map, like I said, especially it just informs and helps, uh, it just helps inform the adventure and add some more flavor to it. So, all right, last little bit here. Learn that, and that. Trying to speed run this coloring, but it's just gonna make it look worse than it already does. And then coloring this little last hex. Something like so. Coloring in the trees around good old Elk County. So I assume there's probably a lot of elk. Maybe that's also the reason why they don't like the ember wolves. I didn't even think about that. So it's called Elk County. Um, so I imagine there's a reason it's called that. And maybe also besides the ember wolves causing trouble for the town, maybe it's also causing trouble uh, for some of the wildlife around the town, namely the elks. So that's probably another reason why they want this ember wolf gone. So it doesn't cause trouble for the town, trouble, trouble for the animals. And they're probably also worried that once if this uh, ember wolf stays around long enough that it might start to attract other ember wolves and then that's just no good for anybody so we got a starting area starting here little surrounding area um got colony hills over here a bit of a coastline down there i like having a map and like how i've been doing this when i've been playing colossal with um this d100 lands is i, I essentially treat if i'm like exploring different hexes i treat each hex as its own exploration phase so i will draw you know, I guess for my character, I draw what three, I draw five cards per hex. So that's how I'm playing it. There's no rules that say you have to do it any certain way. And exploration phases can be longer or shorter depending on the narrative. So that's all that. Got our threads list of figuring out the colossal origins, protecting and releasing the emeralds or starting in Elk County. Matthew is the one that gave us this quest, and also Josephine is our childhood friend in Elk County that shares kind of a similar goal with uh, Piera, who is, well, I will be playing as one of the followed. So she's got a little rookling, a defensive ice type rookling named Maya, and uh, Piera's wielding a good old longsword. So, okay. Now we can actually get to starting and get started with the uh, the game proper, which I actually think I'm going to take a real quick small break um, beforehand and then we can actually get playing into the game and get through hopefully at least this first little quest and, you know, just get through a good couple of scenes. Like I said, it's going to be a bit of a shorter stream today. I'm at least going to stream for another hour, hour plus or so. So yeah, I'm going to take a quick couple minute break fill my water bottle, all that good stuff, stretch my legs. And yeah, I will be back here two, three, five minutes, nothing too crazy. So yeah, I'll be back in a few. That is the wrong button. There we go.
Hello everybody and welcome back to Solo Gaming Sunday Colossal Edition. Where I'm playing the solo adventure Colossal. Featuring Pyrrha, the followed, who is a bit of a larger than life uh, gal. She tells exaggerated stories, roars with laughter. She's got a long sword and a little rookling companion named Maya. Currently starting in Elk County for, with a quest from uh, Matthew, who I don't really know what Matthew is. You know what? Let's figure out real quick. What's what's Matthew's deal? You know what? Let's let's, let's real quick kind of figure that out. And by say that, I mean like what's what do they do? What do they do in town? Like I don't think they're just like a friend. And there's a pretty great table. Good old table fables. I like using a lot the uh, NPC class. Pretty great table. So. Let's see what this gives us. 15. So Matthew is a, the blacksmith. There you go. Got a roll now. So maybe I'll put that in uh, parentheses just so I remember who the heck they are. Mm. Ooh, that works out really good because if they're the blacksmith, maybe that's I was like, so why? Why would Matthew not want like why would he care so much about these ember wolves because clearly these ember wolves being in elk county has caused up a lot of controversy for some people don't want them around because of the elk some people don't want them around because they're causing destruction of property um some people just maybe don't care if they're around it seems like most people don't want them but it's like some people are trying to like just kill them or like trying to be mean to them so i think maybe i like the idea that these ember wolves somehow they are rare um that has something to do with like because he's a blacksmith maybe the ember wolves their their body heat when near a certain type of rock can make like a certain type of metal that's pretty that's rare so it's like you don't the only way you see this metal is if like an ember wolf walks by a piece of coal or something like that right and it just heats it up and makes this new metal. So that's why maybe Matthew is like, hey, these ember wolves, protect them, release them. Don't harm them because they're rare and they make some pretty cool metal with their heat. Maybe it's like a certain type of heat that I don't know. I'm just trying to come up with some like reason why he would be the one to give me that. So I think that's maybe why he's more concerned is because uh, as a blacksmith, he's maybe more familiar with ember wolves and wants them though he wants them dealt with i don't think there's any disagreement with that he wants them dealt with care fully and you know not just to murdered so uh yeah he sent i guess me to deal with this that's where we're gonna start with scene number one and in parentheses i will be putting the chaos ranking behind each uh, the chaos factor for each scene so since it's the first scene, we're starting with a chaos factor of five. Let me get this out of the way. And then, um, like typical mythic fashion, if you're starting a scene, you gotta roll to see if it's altered or what's it called? Um, interrupted. Uh, seven is not because it's not below the chaos factor. So we're good on that front. Scene one where do we want to start so we already got this quest from matthew and i like the idea that yeah maybe we just kind of started it so we're already like outside of town where the ember wolf was spotted um we'll maybe say that it's like one of these two like hexes is like the area or maybe yeah, we'll say um maybe i'm starting in this top right one yeah this 0602 hex with a little river going through it um so maybe i'll also mark down 0602 where I'm starting and I'm um, attempting to find the ember wolf see I have to find this ember wolf and then um, try to capture it bring it somewhere else and release it so that's the other thing is like if you want me to release it you know how far away have do I have to go because if we're, this is right next to the town, that's too close. Like where, maybe just another hex away. Like, I don't know. I don't think it has to be like, I have to go all the way across the map because that would be kind of rough, but I need to at least guide them away so they don't come back to the town. 
Um, so maybe I could also like, I grab the Ember Wolf and then I start trying to make my way towards Colony Hills and kind of release them somewhere in like this area, kind of away from both of the, the, the town and the city. Uh, seems like a decent idea. So, okay, we'll, we'll leave that. I forgot the order for all my papers here. Got too many papers. Scene one, attempting to track the Ember Wolf. Uh, okay. So as I am exploring this hex, um, let's go ahead and see what I explore. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do like an exploration phase where I draw five cards and interpret them and see what I, uh, what I get. So it seems like five cards. I mean, it seems like I'm just gonna always find more stuff, which I guess is probably good. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna interpret these one at a time and then figure out how they all like could combine together or like kind of work. So I'm kind of nervous here. All right, first we got a six of diamonds. So six of diamonds means another adventurer like yourself, garbed in rook armor and armed as one of the classes, but what do they want? Are they here to help you take down a rook? If so, what do they want in return? Or are their intentions darker? If you fight them, I have to create a human opponent. They are not friendly. So whoever I ran into, not super friendly. We got a seven of diamonds. So... Wait, what? Seven of diamonds, I think it's just... How does that work? Seven Diamonds says a screech from the sky at the beat of heavy wings gargoyles. You thought they were just stories that you were told as a child? Apparently not. It grabs you by the shoulders and starts to carry you upwards. Since this is Diamonds, it says you're taken to the nest and the rafters of the ceiling. There is no fighting a gargoyle. Okay, what are my other cards? Because I'm kind of a little bit more nervous now. Five of Spades is um, a a, gr a great strange mechanism seems to operate something in colossal pipes, gear wheels, and levers. It seems oversized, but you think it could operate if um, you can operate it. If damaged, you need something to repair it. Okay. I don't know what that entails. <laughs> we found some strange mechanism. There is a camp of people. At least they look like you. They walk on two legs and carry cool tools of Two arms, but they are not human. Who are they and what do they want? And it's people that don't notice me. And then finally, six of clubs is a trap, maybe a hunter's trap or a pit or some old machinery that I am caught in. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. So I kind of, I mean, I, I don't know how to interpret most, I mean, most of these I can figure out how to interpret, but the, the thing I'm like, the little roadblock I'm running into is like the gargoyle just kind of screws everything else over, right? Like even if I was talking to someone, there's this camp of people and there's like a trap, the gargoyle just comes up and snatches me away, then all that stuff really doesn't matter because I'm just gonna be in the rafters now trying to get down. Um, and it seems like I'm just taken, like I don't have any, there's no checks to be made. There's nothing I can do to try to stop it. It's just happened. And now I have to deal with it. So that's a little unfortunate. Um, yeah, I'm taken to the rafters. What about all these other cards then? See, I guess like how I'm kind of interpreting this is like some of these can combine together pretty well. So you got the that guy is just kind of on his own. Then I think it's these two work pretty well together. No, it's five and six. Yeah, so these two work and these two work pretty well. So I'm kind of interpreting this as like three kind of separate like events. Um, that ends with me just getting gargoyled, I guess, is, is, is how I guess I will interpret this. I don't know. Um, that seems pretty good to me. Well, not pretty good, but uh, all right. So we'll say that these happen in like this order, something like that. So first things first is I'm exploring the hex over next to the city right here in this little river uh, forest hex. 
attempting to find this emberwolf that's terrorizing the town. And in the process of looking around for this emberwolf, I stumble across a great strange mechanism that seems to operate something, big old gears and stuff. And it seems like it is, uh, it's, it's functional, but it's also a trap. Or maybe there's a trap around it. Um, that, let's see. It says it's a six of clubs. It's a trap that I am caught in. Okay, so the big machinery, lots of wheels and stuff. I go up to approach it. I find it's functional, but then I get trapped. Um, I like that maybe it's just like, just like, like a, a collapsible floor underneath like the control panel that like once you activate it, if you don't activate it correctly, like there's some secret start maneuver. There's like a big button that says like on, right? And there's like four smaller buttons. It's like you have to hit the small buttons first before you hit on. If you just hit on, not hitting the smaller buttons first, you fall through the ground. Something kind of simple like that. Like, I don't know, like you just have to turn this machine on in a certain way to not have like the security thing go off, but it did. I didn't know about it. So find this cool looking me mechanism, this thing I turn on, I see it's functional, but I didn't turn on the correct way. So then boom doors open up and I fall down. So we'll kind of, we'll, we'll start with this thing, deal with this thing, and I guess end with this thing and resolve it like that. So I guess maybe like, I don't know if I should have, yeah, I don't know. Cause with this game, like I could just resolve these one at a time, like draw one card and tr treat each thing like as its own. And it feels kind of weird that like, I know like whatever I'm going to do doesn't really matter. Cause at the end of all of this, this gargoyle is going to come and snatch me up. But I, mean, I could just do that first and then skip all this. But like, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll, let's just see what's going on. I need to try to find this Ember Wolf. So if I can grab the Ember Wolf before the gargoyle snatches me, that would actually be good because then <laughs> the Ember Wolf is up there in the rafters with me and it's dealt with It's gone. It's well, maybe not protected, but yeah, maybe that wouldn't be good because then Matthew would probably be kind of upset that I got his Ember Wolf killed. Well, it's not his Ember Wolf, but an Ember Wolf. Um, okay, so let me deal with this machinery first. So, found um, massive functional machinery. And then, yeah, it was trapped. Fell when turned on. So, yeah, I turned on this like machine and then I didn't do it the correct way. So then the floorboards gave out and I just fall to the ground. So then I guess first question for Mythic, did Maya fall with me or are they chilling up top and can maybe get me down? Uh, I don't know. I did. Did Maya fall down with me? I'm going to say it's unlikely uh, that they were standing like right next to me. Like they, they were probably close by. But I think it's unlikely that they also fell or maybe they, they saved themselves. I fell regardless, but did Maya fall? I think it's unlikely. Um, did Maya fall? No, she, they did not. It's a rook. So yeah, Maya's chilling up top. So that, that could be my, my ticket out of this, um, trap, this little pit of despair. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna write down that Maya is fine and not trapped okay boy that's a predicament so i'm down this hole um okay so is this just like a hole like are there any i assume there's no doors so let me ask mythic like are there any from the bottom of this pit are there any like exits or doors or anything or is it just like a hole in the ground are there any doors i think it's very unlikely um, no, there's no doors. Okay. Do I see? Hmm. What's the best way to climb out of a pit? You know, I can just try to like climb the side. Does it look like if I were to attempt it, could I climb out of this pit? I don't know. I'm going to leave it as unlikely. Like, is it even feasible? Uh, no. Mythic says, no, it's not feasible. You're not getting out of this pit no matter how how much you actually like, try to cl physically climb the side. So, okay, that's out of the question. Um, 
So then I guess I'll yell up to Maya to be like, hey, I'm trapped. Um, and just see if the my little rookling can uh, find some rope to like throw down and, you know, attach somewhere, obviously, first and then throw down. So, yeah, that's why I tell Maya. I'm like, hey, look around for some look around for some rope and see if you can t tie it somewhere and toss it down. Uh, so was Maya able to find rope? I think it's likely there's already some rope around somewhere. I think even in the description of this, it says there's mechanism that operates in the castle, pipes, gear wheels, and levers. So there's like a lot of bits and bobs. Like there's either rope or rope like material, maybe. I'm gonna go with likely still. I think it's uh that is uh, an extreme no. So there is no rope around, no nothing. Um okay. How, how the heck are you supposed to get out of here? No rope. I can't climb out. There's no doors in the pit. Is there what I mean, I could try to use like my sword and like stabbing in the wall and try to climb up. It doesn't seem like it would really work. So, hmm. Well, that's the end of the adventure. I'm stuck in a pit. Stream over. No, I'm just um, that'd be funny. First scene, I just, I was going to say for the first scene I die, I pretty much am because I mean, I still have that gargoyle I had to deal with. I basically have like three different events in this terrain and I don't think any of them are going to be actually having to do with this stupid ember wolf um so yeah how am i gonna get out of here i guess i don't have any cool abilities because my main ability is having that rookling so i guess i'm gonna have i don't even uh i kind of want to see if there's like any like on the control panel i was activating if there's any way maya can do anything to get me out i guess i don't know like any buttons that could like raise a platform below me or lower a, an invisible ladder to go get people out of the pit. I don't know. There's got to be some way that people get down there. Um, so, yeah, is there like controls that can help get me out of here? I'm gonna go 50 50 because I don't know. So, yes. All right. It looks like that with some button pushing, um, Maya is able to find this like emergency ladder that kind of drops down from this little ceiling hatch and is a way that I can climb up. Um, am I able to successfully climb up? That's, I guess my question to Mythic, was I able to success successfully climb up? I'm gonna go with the very likely. Um, yeah, I think it's very likely. And yeah, Mythic says I, I was able to climb the, the ladder. So, okay. So then, yeah, uh, let's see. Let me write that down. Maya found button. So they found a button for the emergency ladder. I'm glad whoever built this machine built an emergency ladder into the pit because that's pretty lucky of me. Um, okay, so then I'm out of the pit. Great. What does this machine do? Like, why would somebody trap it? It's a strange mechanism that seems to operate something in the Colossal. That's really cool. Um, are there any... Is there any, like, signs or any, like, written... Anything written down anywhere that I can see, like, what this machine does? Is there, like, a sign that's like, oh, this is... This is the plumbing for the Colossal that runs all the toilets. Like, what... I doubt there is. I'm going to go with a very unlikely that there's actually any, like, signage. Um, yeah, there's no signs. So I'm just going to start tinkering with it and looking at, like, what kind of, the, you know, the control panel, the, the different pipes and gears, and try to get an idea of what it could even do. So am I able to come up with anything? I think it's unlikely. Let's see, though. Yeah, no, I'm not. No idea what it's for. So I have this big mechanism that I don't know. Um, let me see, like, so I've already turned it on. There's controls for the, the, the pit. It's there, this control panel. I guess like, is there, I guess there's probably not any, no helpful information on it that helps me get an idea of like what this thing does. Um, I don't know, we just start messing, I'm gonna start push, 
pushing buttons and pulling levers and seeing if anything changes in the room um, or in like the general area. So yeah, I just start pushing buttons and pulling the levers. Does anything change? I think it's probably likely so. Well, we'll go 50-50, I don't know. I don't know what this thing does. Uh, yes, something does change. So me pushing buttons and pulling the lever um, does do something. Is it related to the braziers in the sky? I'm gonna go 50-50, because I don't know. Nope. All right, it's not related to the braziers, but I was changing that, what did it, it was, is something to do with the weather? I think it's also 50-50, I don't know. Nope, not the weather either. Okay, so it's not the lighting, not the weather. It's this mechanism. Um, I guess weather, that'd kind of be temp wait, 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 maybe the temperature. I guess that's kind of weather, but not really. So is it something to do with the temperature? No, okay. <laughs> that thing just keeps giving me a big old no. I am going 50-50 on all these though, so that's, that's maybe on me. Um, then is there a way to like something to do because clearly i was pushing and pulling this stuff so it did something was it something to do with like ooh the water it has something to do with water i feel like that's likely that has something to do with like the, i'm next to a river does it mess with the river i think that's very likely yes that's an extreme yes so yeah um yeah okay i like that idea that there's this yeah because i'm in this tile with this river so there you go it has something to do with controlling the river maybe there's like a waterfall nearby or something that this machine changes the river i was gonna say pressure that's not right but um like how much it flows and how much water is going through it it's uh yeah it changes like the river's sp speed and all that good stuff so okay um i figured out what the the, the device does by just pushing buttons and pulling levers all right, so um, mechanical device um, changes river, I guess. Maybe that's a, I don't know if that's the best way to word it, but we'll, we'll go with that. Maybe modifies river. I don't know why I wrote, <laughs> wrote water instead of river. I wasn't thinking. Uh, so yeah, changes the river. Okay, so that's the first bit of the, <laughs> the five cards I drew dealt with. So next up, um, I have this advent, this not friendly adventure along with a camp of people that don't notice me. Um, I, I kind of like the idea that yeah, maybe the camp doesn't notice me, but this adventure is part of the camp, like some sort of guard or something that they notice me. Um, so who, so, so let me think, I guess like I probably finish up in dealing with this mechanism, getting out of the pit. And then I just start to walk around the hex a little bit more, trying to just find out where this dang ember wolf went. And in the process of doing so, I find a little camp of people. At least they look like people. You know, they walk on two legs and carry tools and two arms, but they're not human. Um, they do not notice me, but one of the guards did. And they are an, a not so friendly adventurer. Okay. Um,. So they look like people, but they're not, they're they're not. What could be the thing that makes them not not human? What would what what's the you know they're they're what stands out for them? Um, what makes them not human? I guess is my question. I don't know. I guess some descriptors to like. Whoa! I rolled a one hundred. That's pretty cool. Um, yieldingly, maybe young. Okay, young. defeated rough huh well that paints a picture there's just some young uh, camp of people who look defeated and i forgot what the other one was but yeah they're not looking too good <clears throat> um hmm Well, and then so there's camp of people. The camp 
all the people in the camp don't notice me, but there is one guy that was separated from the camp. Maybe just like out taking a week or I don't know, going to the stream to fill up their water or something, or I don't know, taking one of their, their pets for a walk. Who knows? But they're separated from the rest of the group and they saw me and they're not friendly. I feel like if I'm not, if I don't deal with the situation with them, they're going to call in all their friends at the camp, which I don't want to deal with. So, um, we'll say I'm dealing with someone that's armed, like, no, well, they are armed, but they're an armed class. So they have like the extra rook arm kind of coming out of their back. And maybe they have a, probably like a sword, maybe an ax. I like the idea that they have an ax with that arm. Um, yeah. So let me jot this down, but come across camp of people put in parentheses like what I rolled. So they're young, defeated. I rolled another word that I already forgot, but it, it worked pretty. It was a damaged might have been damaged, but we'll just keep young, the young and defeated. That still works pretty good. Um, then we'll just say an armed class guy way from the group notices me. Okay. So they notice me. <laughs> Great. Um, what do they want? So obviously, and they're obviously not friendly. Are they just trying to immediately attack me the second they see me? I think it's unlikely. <laughs> well, we'll see what Mythic says. I think it's unlikely. Uh, and yeah, they're they're not trying to just immediately attack me, which is good. They're not friendly. We've established that, but at least they're not immediately trying to kill me. So I got that going for me. So yeah, I'm looking around for the Zembra Wolf. Come across the camp of people. This guy sees me. He is armed. He's not trying to kill me. He's not friendly. So what does he want? Let me do some actions and see if that comes up with anything. Forty three fail. Mm. Twenty five. Create, create, fail. The hell does create? What could create fail? Let me roll this again. Create and increase. Increase and create. Eighty one is ruin. Create ruin. Oh. That's a that's that's something, you know, that's something to go off of create rune. Um, so they're just like destroying stuff. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think like these whoever these people are, I think are all their their group is all about destruction. They're just trying to like. Maybe the, the, yeah, I don't know, maybe it's something like that they yeah i don't know there's some group that like got attacked at one point and then just like got pissed off and are now just attacking everybody all the time and are just they're like well we got attacked and we got injured so to take out our anger we're just gonna go attack everybody else show them how it feels something like that i guess i don't know um that's kind of what this group is about but this guy what does what do they want for me um does do they just want me to leave or is he like demanding something from me? Does he just tell me to leave? I think it's likely. Uh, no, he's not just telling me to leave. There's a, there's something else going on here. Um, let me roll the actions again to see like what what does this guy want from me? Use and I'm just gonna re-roll that one because I didn't like it. Use and pursue. I mean, I kind of think like he kind of wants me to just use and pursue makes me think he wants to use me to help pursue his goal, the group's goal of causing, just creating runes, just destroying stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I walk up on this guy and he's like, who are you? You're not one of us. And I'm like, no, I'm not. 
And he doesn't attack me right away, but he's like, does it go over with the blah, 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 blah. I don't know what they call themselves, but they're the group that creates runes. And so they're not human, I guess. They're young looking, defeated looking people. And he's like, well, I'm just trying to think. He's like, well, if you want to. I, I don't know. I, I, um, and I told him, like, I'm looking for this wolf. He's like, oh, I don't care what you're looking for. He says something along the lines of, like, I'm trying to think of how, like, he would. Something like. I was like, well, I would, you know, if. Because he's coming off aggressively. So maybe I'm like, you know what? I'll just leave. You know what? Obviously, you don't want me here. I'll just leave. And he's like, you're not going anywhere. He's like, you look like you're pretty, uh. Pretty, pretty quick on your feet and you got some uh useful abilities maybe he sees my rookling he's like that rookling looks pretty pretty helpful and so maybe he says um something he's like well you're not going anywhere if you're going somewhere you're gonna come with us to help us do our thing which is them just destroying shit i guess um and i'm of course i'm like no thanks <laughs> and he's like well and he just grabs his axe from uh i guess he gets his axe ready with his extra arm in the back and uh takes to a fighting stance and i think we're just fighting i don't think there's anything else to it because he wants me to join their group i'm saying no and clearly he's not taking no for an answer which is kind of screwed up so guess i'm fighting this guy so let me go ahead and put this gargoyle off to the side for now i'm still gonna get swooped up at the end of this but let's let's go ahead and do this fight so our first combat, and it's surprisingly not against a rook. I kind of thought most of the... Honestly, I don't even know if I've done any non-rook combat in this game. I think whenever I've played, I've only fought the rooks because they're kind of the main thing. So uh, interesting that I'm already fighting some dude. So I need to see what their intention is and... I think I, re I mean, I don't need to know what their intention is. It's not. Because it just seems like they just want to kill me. So um, and they're going to be attacking with a ranged weapon. OK, and that's it. So yes, that's uh, and they only have a combat score of one, and I have a combat score of three. So that means I get three cards for myself, and we're gonna do a little bit of combat. So these are my three cards. Uh, not 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 the highest, but uh, sort of out like that. So I got a four, a five, and an eight. They're only gonna attack me once, but I gotta defeat it. So let's hope it's nothing too high. It's a two. Uh, I can go ahead and do a critical hit against them, right? I counter with the five, and that's a win because they're only attacking me the once. Um, they're attacking me with the two of clubs, which two of clubs means. Hold on, sorry. That means they're. It was a weapon attack, so they. Um, yeah, this guy readies his axe that he has on his back with his extra arm uh, maybe in his hand he just has his fists and so he just um kind of charges at me with his axe trying to attack me i hold up my long sword block the attack and then I, I block it with my axe and i guess in one swing also kind of bring it around and slash the dude and he's done for in just one hit that's not too bad um, and since I have one, if you want to combat against a human, you gain one treasure. So treasure is kind of like the, it's kind of like a currency in this game. That's it's more or less the currency in this game. So, um, I'll just mark down how many treasures I have. I have one and that was a quick fight. Yeah. He had, I guess it did say he has a he had a ranged weapon. Whatever. He probably also maybe in one hand had like a ranged weapon, but then he came at me with the axe. I blocked, hit him back, and he died. So that was a pretty quick fight. And then, uh, but then I should be able to.
Where's the part where I save? I, I, I mark another of my rewards, right? So I get to... Where does it say where I mark a, a thing for winning? I thought I'd do. Maybe that's only for losing. Hold on a second. Oh, it's only against a rook that you add. You get the rook's reward and a combat score, but in a combat against a human, you just get a treasure. Okay. That's what I was looking for, and that's why I couldn't find it. So yeah, dealt with this guy. He came at me, not super nice, and that's what he gets. Now I didn't want, maybe I didn't kill him. Maybe I just kind of knocked him out. But um, yeah, I didn't want to deal with him. So he's been dealt with though, and I can continue looking around for this Ember Wolf. And I guess I deal with this last card that I continue my search for this Ember Wolf, and out of nowhere, I hear a screech from the sky and the beat of heavy wings. It's a gargoyle. The I thought this was just a story that was told as a child, but apparently not. It comes down and grabs me by my shoulders and starts carrying me upwards to the ceiling, up in its nest in the rafters, and there's no fighting. So now I'm in the nest of this uh this gargoyle. So I guess, first off, did Maya come with me? I think it's likely that maybe they, I think it's very likely that like Maya was either also grabbed or saw me getting grabbed and I quickly told them to like grab on my leg or something. So they also came. So is, is Maya with me? I think it's likely. Um, no, they're not. It's just me. <laughs> Great. Alone. Gotten taken to this gargoyle's nest up in the rafter. So what am I supposed to do? I can't just like jump down. I got to figure out a solution here. Uh, what is even in our gargoyle's nest in the rafter? Like, I don't even know. Uh, so we go ahead and uh, this, this seems like a new scene. So I'm, I'm going to create a new scene. Uh, this is going to be scene number two. I think the chaos factor, I think it goes up because I didn't feel like I was really in control at all of that last scene. I haven't done anything to progress. Um, finding the ember wolf so i don't know i'm currently in the the rafters i guess i don't not a hex um and then i guess the current scene starts with me attempting to to flee the nest i don't know boy oh boy oh boy let me roll a d10 to see what kind of uh anything has changed yes so we got below the chaos factor and it's even so that means the scene is uh interrupted so then that's a random event so i roll on the random event focus table and get 42 so it's npc negative okay and i believe that just means like some something bad happens to an npc i don't know how else to put it so NPC negative. Well, then who is the negative against? We do have a couple, a couple characters on our character list. Um, yeah, so we'll see. Probably just need to roll like a, I guess a D6 work. Like a one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so let's see who's, who's getting negatively affected. Elk County as a whole is getting negatively affected. That's not good. Oh boy, what's happening to Elk County as I've been wandering? Um, quickly figure out. And clearly this is something that's going to affect me, even though I'm up in the nest, I guess. They're not necessarily affect me, but it's just affecting the, the Elk County. So 28 defend and 20 combine. Um, I like defense. I don't like combine. 68. So defense, praise. Hmm. Okay. Defense and praise. So kind of the first thing that comes to my mind is like, okay, maybe Elk County has been praised for how good their security is and how good their defenses are. 
but uh, they may be, you know, with this whole Ember Wolf situation, they've been a bit more on high security and people are pretty happy. They're like, man, Ember, uh, the security here, it's pretty good. And then at some point, uh, something kind of happens, I guess. So. Let me, let me roll this one more time. I, wait, wait. 93. Um, okay, so I, I, you know what, maybe, maybe we'll do something like this, that's, we'll say that, so it was a, it was something negative for Elk County, it was like defense, I already forgot the second word, what was it, like, um, separate, separate. So, what was it? What was it? I, I wrote a couple words. Um, yeah, I liked the idea that that like Ember Ember Elk County. I keep calling it Ember County. Elk County is known for its good security, even with this Ember Wolf situation. They've been doing all right, so people are pretty happy with it. But then. You know what? Maybe I got I got swept up by a, a gargoyle. Maybe these gargoyles come down in packs. So when they all like when one comes down, uh, a couple of them come down. So maybe as I'm being dragged up to the rafters, I can see that there is a gargoyle attacking Ember County, Ember County, Elk County. Um, also, maybe grabbing a person or two on the way. So yeah, we'll see. That's the uh, the event is. Uh, a different gargoyle is attacking. Okay, so yeah, we see Esobring brought up another gargoyle swooping down towards Elk County, just grabbing people and also bringing them up to the rafters here with me, which is fun. Um, so I'm at this point, I'm in the nest of the gargoyle in the rafters. How am I going to get down? I, it seems like in my, I have to like, and I'm up here, oh, not with, I don't have Maya either. So I'm kind of on my own. Um, let me write that down so I get, I forgot. Uh, Maya isn't here. So I'm kind of on my own. I mean, I think the only thing I can think of, like the safe way to get down, unless there's any way for me to climb like between the rafters, like on the wooden beams and then parkour my way down. But this is like way up in the sky. Like the rafters, you can't even see from the ground because they're hidden by the clouds. So it is way up there. Um, let me first ask Mythic, is there even the slightest possibility that I could like, do I see any way I could like parkour down by like walking across the rafters and like jumping down like some like stone brick or something something like that right is there any way i could kind of get down from this nest i'm gonna go with very unlikely but i don't know that was spinning and spinning and spinning uh what did i say very unlikely yes there is a way for me to do that which is great i love hearing that i'd like to get out of this little situation and maybe try to fight a rook or something um see so yeah, i guess there is a way I could do this, but let me see. So I guess first it's going to be kind of two parts and we have to sneak out of the nest, try to get away from the gargoyle and then attempt to climb down, I guess. Um, something like that. We'll have to figure that out. Uh, hello there, Katie K. Happy Sunday to you too. I'm, I'm enjoying the game pretty well. It's been off to a bit of a rough start. Um, I fell in a hole and then got attacked and then I've been snatched up by a gargoyle that took me to its nest in the ceiling, which I'm trying to get down from. So it's, uh, I'm having fun, but uh, Pira, not so much. She's She's been having a bit of a rough go today as as uh, as we've been going along. I'm playing the followed class, so I get a little cool companion, which unfortunately isn't with me right now because I got snatched up by a gargoyle and the, the apparently, my little rookling didn't grab onto me and it wasn't also captured. So 
um, I'm up here by myself, which is uh, no good. So, huh. Um, so I, there is a way I can kind of parkour down. So I need to try to get away from the gargoyle, get out of the nest, and then try to get down. So let me do the first part. Try to sneak away, sneak past the gargoyle and get out of the nest and then go from there. So am I able to, to do that? I, th I think so. I think it's probably likely that, it will, am I able to do that without any issues? Um, to escape the gargoyle nest, I think it's like without issues, 50-50, I don't know. I feel like the nest is gonna be tough uh, to get out of. I also try to distract them. Let me see first. Am I able to just get away? Like, I'd probably wait till there's some opening that I see, like the gargoyle fly away or did, like is looking at something else. I try to sneak out. Um, but am I able to just do that or am I going to have to come up with like a better plan? Yeah, no, I need a better plan. So I'm not able to just sneak out either. This gargoyle is being too attentive or there's multiple. I don't know. So I needed to try to distract this thing somehow. Um, is there something in the nest like I could throw, like some debris or something? I think that's very likely there's there's something I can throw. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I guess my my best bet is I'm going to grab some, we'll just say like little bits of the nest that this, I don't even, what would a gargoyle's nest look like? Whatever. Um, grabbing whatever I can throw and just trying to throw it in the opposite direction I want to run. So if I'm trying to go like left, I'll throw it to the right and try to make a run for it. Something along those lines. So, okay, I do that. I take whatever I can, chuck it across, hit one of the other rafter beams, and then just wait till the second the gargoyle's attention is away from me and try to make a run for it. So I do all of that. Am I successful? I think it's very likely. Um, please tell me that's a 60. Thank goodness. Yes, I am successful. So gargoyle is distracted. I kind of run away and I'm at least out of the nest and kind of onto a separate part of the rafters where I can try to start attempting to climb down and try to make my way back to Maya and whatever that camp of people and the, the river contraption. So yeah, I just need to try to do some like parkour down. It's going to be kind of uh, risky. So I guess I just, I just, I just do it. I just start climbing down and hoping for the best. Um, do I, do I run into any issues while climbing down? Uh, I think it's probably unlikely. I think I have a, a good shot, but there's not, there's going to be room for it. We'll go 50, 50. I think it's 50, 50 that I maybe run into some issue. Uh, yeah, there, there's definitely some issue. So what? what's the issue is it just like i can't find a place to climb or am i getting like attacked by the gargoyle is there another creature i gotta deal with another terrain thing i gotta deal with it could be a lot of things um so as i'm climbing down do i have another run-in with the gargoyles is that is that what it is it seems likely uh yeah yeah that's what it is so okay so i got away from the gargoyle got out of the nest Oh, like over to like the other side of the rafters. I start climbing down and then at some point a gargoyle sees me. Probably we'll just say it's the same one that they maybe they notice after a bit of time that I'm like gone and they're like, man, got to go get them. So they sort of starts flapping its wings coming back at me as I'm like trying to slowly climb down. But I see this thing just coming at me. I'm like climbing a bit faster and faster. Um, I guess my guess is this thing is pretty big. I, probably, I don't have any, I have my long sword on me, but that's about it. And that's, that's probably not going to do much. I, I think I just need to hide from it, like temporarily. So I'm like, I'm kind of envisioning me like climbing down stone bricks and like a stone wall. So they're pretty big, like it takes you know, a bit of effort and whatnot. Is there anywhere as I see this gargoyle just flapping its wings coming at me? Uh, it looks probably pretty pissed that I got out of its nest um is do I see anywhere in like the wall or anything like any imperfections or cracks in the wall that I can kind of slide into for some temporary protection I think it's likely there's probably something right nope guess not mythic said no so okay climbing down the wall 
Gargoyle is coming at me. Nowhere to hide. <sighs> um, I don't have anything to throw. I don't have an extra arm to like stab at it with. Can't hide. I wonder how far down. I wonder if I could just jump the rest of the way. But then even if I jump down, I'm still not going to be. I have to just like hang with one arm and like stab at this gargoyle, I guess. I don't know. But like, I'm pretty sure you can't like you can, but you can't fight a gargoyle. At least that's what the uh, this was making it sound like is because it says here, uh, yada, yada, gargoyles. You thought they were a myth. You were wrong. Apparently it, grab it grabs you by the shoulders and it starts to carry you upwards. Yeah, at the, at the very last time it says there is no fighting a gargoyle. So, I mean, some creatures, obviously, you can fight and people you can fight. Like these gargoyles, I don't know if they're one of them. I mean, you I could fight it, but could I actually win? I don't think so. Um, so I guess, like, I'm going to try to just. I don't know what else to do as a gargoyle comes at me. I just like hold onto the wall with one hand and be like trying to stab at it with my long sword, but the other trying to just hold it back as I try to either make my way more down or finding a place of safety. Um, so am I as what do I even want to ask? Am I able to protect myself from this gargoyle that's like coming at me? Uh, I think it's likely. I don't know. We'll go with likely. So I'm doing a pretty good job. Yeah. All right. So I'm able to kind of protect myself for the time being that maybe I'm like able to mean we just kind of scare it away or like not really hurt it, but just give it give it an idea that like, hey, you don't you don't want to mess with me, guy. Like, let's just let's just end this as is. And, you know, you be on your way. Um, so, yeah, maybe it just kind of gets annoyed. Maybe I get a good stab or two in that I kind of hurt it, but not like any actual damage, but enough to like it's kind of irritated at this point and just like annoyed. And it's like, you know what? It just kind of flies away and maybe it sees someone down on the ground or it gets distracted by something else. But I think after a bit of time, it lets me go. And then we be able to climb down and kind of get back um, to the surface level. And maybe I'm probably not like right where I started in the last text, but then I'll probably make my way like back there. I imagine I'm pretty close by. Um, okay, so I'm 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 back where I started. Great. I'm just gonna write that I climbed down. I'm not trying to keep super clear notes. I want to find this Ember Wolf. So I'm back in the Ember Wolf territory. I just want to start looking around for it because I did a lot of hunting earlier and couldn't find it. I found a lot of other annoying stuff. So this Ember Wolf, do I see, as I look around a bit more, do I see any signs of it? Um, I think it's likely. And that dice just rolled way over. That's just nice. Okay, 55. Um, yeah. So I do see signs of it. Do I just see it or do I just see... Is it, yeah, so I, I asked if I see signs of it and I said yes. Mythic said yes. Um, but do I actually see it or do I see like scorch paw prints in the ground or something? Like, do I see like signs that it was here recently or do i actually like see the wolf um so my question to mythic is do i see the ember wolf and i'm gonna go with the likely this is probably likely i've been looking around for a while yes that's an extreme yes so i take that to mean um it is right near me and yeah it's probably not too too happy uh so i need to capture it or knock it out or something I don't have much as far as adventuring supplies, so this isn't very good. Um, I'm just gonna try to hit it with the butt of my sword. So maybe I'll do combat with it, and then I just will try to go for a non-lethal kill as I try to just knock it out. Well, we'll that's how I'll play it out. So we'll do some combat real fast. My combat score is three, so I get three cards. This is going to be um, a non rook enemy so it's the king of clubs is going to be its type so i didn't do that so this is going to be a um it's a king of clubs it's going to attack with melee makes sense it's like a wolf so i don't know if it's like throwing fireballs or something so okay 
Uh, these are my cards. It's only going to attack once. So I only have one chance to defend or slash counter. So let's see what it leads with. It's a queen. Yeah, I'm screwed. There's nothing I can, <laughs> nothing I could do against that. It, it only gets one attack. So um, it's just going to, yeah, it's going to attack me because I can counter with that and that's going to hurt. So I will be taking a wound from that as I lose, we'll say part of my as maybe my leg gets injured, so now my exploration score goes down. And I'm just gonna start another combat. We'll see this guy's still attacking with melee. Or maybe not. Let me draw my cards. Its card is seven of clubs, so that means something. That means, yes, it's attacking with melee. Let's see what it's attacking with this time. A six of hearts. Okay, I believe ace is high in that case. I can get a crit. Even if I, it isn't, my 10 still beats it, but. Um, let me double check what it is. Ace is, I assume Ace is high in this game. Um, but regardless, a 10 still beats it. I don't need a critical hit because I'm not trying to kill it. So I am chilling. I, this wolf comes at me, it bites at my leg. It has like scorch marks in my leg. It sears at my pants and really kind of hurts my leg. It's kind of messed up, but I push on and try to just, I'm trying to like swing at this wolf to try to get it like some distance and I try to just hit it with like the butt of my long sword on the head just trying to knock him out essentially like I said non-lethally take this thing out and I'm able to do so which is great that's a great start I got the wolf knocked out and now I just need to like transport him somewhere away from away from Elk County so Matthew's not mad and the whole town's just chilling that's that's the plan um, okay. Let me, let me write down that I knocked out the, the, the help this ember wolf. Uh, okay, so I'm still, let's see my little hex map. I'm still in this tile. I think my plan was to follow this road, kind of go out of town, head towards Colony Hills, the city down here, and somewhere between here and here. I will uh, get rid of this wolf. So, yeah. I think I need some way to transport it though. That's gonna be kind of an issue. I need either like a cart or some like just rope so I can walk this thing. Like, I don't know. This thing's like a big wolf. So I don't think I could just carry it around. Um, so after it's knocked out, I head back into town, into Elk County, and we'll see real fast. Am I able to like find a cart or something? I think that's pretty likely. I think it's very likely. Um, yeah, I'm able to find like a cart. And yeah, I mean, Matthew's a blacksmith. He's the one that told me to do this. So I imagine he probably has a cart for like transporting his stuff around and importing metals and whatever. So he probably has a spare cart that he's like, yeah, you could use it. So uh, I grab the cart, go back to the wolf, Still knocked out, loaded onto the cart, and then I start uh, making my way down this road, down this road, through this mountain hex. Uh, I probably rest up, I know I probably don't rest up actually, because this thing's like, I'm kind of on the clock here, I need to get this thing released. So yeah, I kind of go through here, through here, zigzag past the mountains, uh, and I will head to this 303 tile real fast and see what's going on there. So we go ahead and generate a new hex 77 is um okay so it does have road does it so okay well, the road doesn't really go anywhere shoot and it's the same tile as the last one so it's another mountain the road kind of ends in this tile which maybe that's decent <laughs> it's not really but um little roads don't they don't actually do anything at least how i'm playing it So we have a mountainous region. So I think, yeah, the first thing I do when I get to this is like, okay, we're at, we're pretty far out of town. We're at least like two spaces, you know, a little bit of a gap away now and also not super close here. Probably this would be a little bit more ideal. Yeah, I guess I'll wait one more time before I release this thing. So I draw four cards. So let's see what I encounter in this hex. So um, I'm going to be encountering a massive rook. 
I'm gonna be finding some treasure. The sea. I somehow find the sea, even though I'm I'm in the mountains. If I get a glimpse of this sea over here, I don't know. And then uh, a dead body of another human. And it seems safe. So we'll say uh, we'll save the rook for last. Um, so yeah, I get to the top of this mountainous area and I look around and I'm able to get a good glimpse of the uh, the ocean. Maybe we'll say it's it comes up over here, so it's not like terribly far away. So I'm able to get a nice uh, glimpse of the ocean. And then I find the, the body of a dead guy. I find, I guess, two items on him. The the, sub, the item I was supposed to find and whatever the jack item is. So let me draw uh, two cards. So I find some knowledge and an artifact. So maybe some book, you know, it says knowledge. So I imagine some book um, and an artifact. So let me write that down. And yeah, I'm still bringing this cart with this ember wolf along. And I'm like going over this mountainous area, find this dead guy. I'm like, well, that can't be good. Looks like he got smushed. I was like, that's probably just like a rock or something smushed the guy. But I don't see a rock around. So I'm like, well, that's kind of strange. And as I'm making my way through the mountain area, still heading towards the colony hills, the ground starts shaking. And I was like, well, that's weird. Must be like, a, like an avalanche or, or like a rock slide or something. So I'm like looking around. Kind of looking like up at the mountains that's like above me. I'm like, I don't see any rocks falling, but the, the ground is like shaking and then shaking more. It's like, what, what, what the heck is that? And then it dawns on me as I see this massive thing come around the corner that 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 shaking is not a rock slide, it's not an earthquake. That is a massive rook that's coming my way, coming around one of the corners of the mountain, and it's on its way. So this is a massive rook, huge. Let's go ahead and try to take this out. What's its intention? Is heart to flee from you? So it's trying to flee from me. I don't. Oh, so that's what their, their intention is at the end of the fight. So they're going to just like try to flee if they take me out. Um, OK. And they are oh, also eight, so they're attacking with a melee weapon. <clears throat> we got a massive rook. Melee weapon. Intention is to flee. Seems weird, but we'll 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 roll with it. It's what the cards say. Uh, and then finally, I need another card for its magic and body type, which it's going to be a rumble magic type, and um, it's an attack style body. I think that's oh and then the last lastly I have to draw a card to see it's it's attacking with did I already roll melee weapon oh that's for another person oh I was wondering why like intention flee seems weird okay so and that first card was my bad I wasn't supposed to do that so this is the one I need so it's attacking with a ranged arm oh wait it's, it's attacking okay okay my bad it's got a ranged weapon and its reward if you kill it, it's its arm. Okay, there we go. Massive Rook has been set up. So then also this Massive Rook is going to attack a lot. It has five, five attacks. My combat score is only three, so this is going to be rough, to say the least. So I get three decent cards. 
I basically have to win all three of these attacks or I lose. So that's fun. So let's see what they're going to do. Uh, an ace. Yeah, I've already lost. <laughs> this game sucks. Now, isn't I? Let me double check if an ace is low. I don't fully know. I don't know if it says it, but I think an ace is high. Let me triple quadruple check. Where would it, I don't even know where it would say that. And da, 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 I'm trying to find this. I do not see this anywhere. I don't know for sure. I, I, I'm just assuming it is, but it doesn't. I wish it would explicitly say. Because also it's it's throwing me off because aces, um, like if anytime you look at like one of these tables, they're always listed first, not like last. So it's making me think they're kind of treating it as a one. We'll say yeah. We'll we'll treat aces as well. I think that's how I treated it last fight. So whatever. So I beat him. Cool. Well, I beat this attack as. And I guess I could look at the flavor for this. Um, this page, right? Okay, so it's attacking me with club attack. So, um, yeah, this massive rook has this uh, big old mace, we'll say, in its one arm. It's like swinging down at me with this. But then what do I do? I, I, I come up with something creative. I wait till the last second, dodge out of the way of this massive mace that comes down and right when it hits the ground, it's kind of stuck in the ground for a second. I hop on the mace, climb up, kind of swing at him and make my way like inside the rook itself. Um, okay, so that was the first attack done. So I kind of move that off to the side. Next, I'm getting attacked by a seven so I can deflect with a nine. So it's trying to attack me with its rumble magic by causing some sort of tremor or something in the ground but uh i'm i'm chilling i'm i'm already inside the rook so i'm just at this point i'm like looking around for like a control panel like some like i'm finding some like gears and mechanisms i'm just like grabbing out like wires and stuff and just trying to pull apart some of like the the, the inner workings of this thing uh i guess is what i'm trying to do so i just need to win one more of these attacks uh, okay, cool. I'm chilling because he tries to attack me again using his rumble magic and I use my my own magic, which I don't really have any magic. So I'm just doing an unarmed attack again. Once this, I'm just trying to mess stuff up inside causing uh, trouble for this thing. But then the next two attacks are just going to land, which is unfortunate because I don't have anything. So it is able to hit me with his rumble magic. And then it um, there are some like some trapped rooms inside that I take some damage on. So I was successful in the fight. I did win, but I'm also taking some uh, wounds, I believe. I think regardless if you win or lose. Yeah, I'm still taking some damage. So basically I have to remove one point because I lose two points and I gained one point. So I think again, it's probably just my legs that got, or maybe like, it affects my exploration. I don't want my, my combat to get worse because it's already not great. But with that, I dodged the rook, the rook's mace attack, hopped on the mace, climbed up its arm, got inside, was just pulling out wires and stuff as I'm just working, working my way through this thing. Um, got hit by some traps inside and got attacked by some magic. So I did take some wounds, but in the end, I slayed the thing. And I get to keep its arm, which is pretty cool. So I get a massive rook arm as a reward for taking down this thing. Sweet. With that, the rook has been slain and that's dealt with. So now I can free this ember wolf into these mountains and uh, let it be free and you know, hope it doesn't return to find its way back to Elk County, but we'll see. Maybe I wasn't too far enough away, but at least I'm a couple tiles away. That should be far enough. Maybe I'll just try to make sure like it goes in that direction, like away from Elk County as I release it. And yeah, defeated the Rook, freed the Ember Wolf that was causing trouble for Elk County. So that seems like a pretty good adventuring day for good old Piera.
And I think I, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up there. I was going to keep today's stream a little bit on the shorter side. I got some stuff I need to do tonight. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed playing this game. Def we didn't get as far as I thought and got uh, maybe not distracted along the way, but uh, had a lot of challenges I had to overcome, but we got there. We freed the Ember Wolf. Matthew will be happy to hear that. I'll return his cart back to him and hopefully the town will chill out about this Ember Wolf situation. And, you know, hopefully Pyrrhic can actually start to figure out more about Colossal Origins and, and who built it. I mean, she didn't, I guess she did learn a bit more about how the castle works. Uh, earlier, she encountered that mechanism that controlled the river. I'm sure she'll want to go back and figure out more about that and try to figure out who made it and all the stuff about it. But she's slowly learning more about the world around her, but uh, still a lot of mystery out there. So yeah, that's this. I think it's a pretty cool game. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's that. So let me switch to my just chatting as I do a little bit of just chatting. Oh, I forgot to switch out my chats. I knew I forgot to do something. Hold on. This will take like two seconds to fix. Boom. You good now? There we go. Okay. Um, so in my normal tradition of ending my stream, I will go ahead and tease out what's coming up this week on the channel. So Tuesday, I'm going to have a random video and that's going to be me playing some Keyforge where I will be fighting the key rack and again but this time i'll be using some of the new winds of exchange decks where i open a freshly sealed winds of exchange deck and see how it fares against the key rack because i've not done that yet so that's what will be coming tuesday uh thursday still no video but i think hopefully ideally this will be the last week of thursday with no videos starting next thursday i should be starting my new series so be on the lookout for that i'll talk about that more I mean, my next stream, um, which speaking of which next Sunday, I don't, I'm not going to be streaming. Uh, I'm going to be busy. I'm going to be <laughs> moving. So got to do all the fun stuff involved with moving. So yeah, no stream uh, next Sunday because I'll be doing all that fun stuff. So yeah, uh, the main thing on the channel this week is just good old Keyforge, um, me fighting the key rack in, and then hopefully not this week, but next Thursday. We'll be back with uh, a new series, which I'm excited to kind of tease out. Maybe I'll, 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 I guess I'm not gonna be able to tease it out next week because I'm not streaming next week. So I guess, you know what, I'll, I'll tease out a little bit um, about what my upcoming series is for Thursdays. So it's gonna be a bit of a different series. I'm not doing like a playthrough series. I think I already kind of talked about that. And who knows, the series might, uh, it, well, well, I don't know what, people's thoughts are on it. So I guess it'll be a good way to kind of get engaged reaction. But my plan is I don't have a great name for the series yet, um, but it's gonna be, uh, my tentative name for it is called like, let's build a dungeon, okay? So it's basically gonna be probably a 15 part series, so gonna be 15 different videos where the first 10 parts will be me going through different sources, just taking a single RPG source and building an entire dungeon with it. I'm gonna do that 10 different times with 10 different sources. Then the last part of the series, the last five videos will be then be me taking whatever sources I use throughout the series and combining them to make ideally a really cool dungeon. So like my plan is for the 10 videos throughout the series, I'm making Dungeons and Dragons, fifth edition dungeons. But then at the end, the last five videos, I'll be making dungeons for other sources. So for example, like, oh, if I was gonna be making some dungeon for Starforged, like what sources would I use? You know, maybe I would grab the room generated from this source and the creature generated from this source and using this source to add in the, the details of the rooms. So that'll be the last part of the series is where I'll be trying to figure out, okay, if I'm building a dungeon for the system, what parts of what's like resources would I want to grab? So hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, it's going to be like a 15 part series where the first 10 parts is just one source at a time. I build a dungeon with just that book or whatever, see how it looks. And then the last part will be taking my favorite bits and pieces from each of the sources I use, 
and making hopefully a cool dungeon with it for different game systems. So at the end of it, I'll hopefully have 10 full D&D &D dungeons and then five full dungeons for other systems, which I plan to do like a Starforge one, a Fallout one. I'm still deciding on exactly what sources I'll be trying throughout the series and which ones I'll do at the end, but it should be pretty cool. So that's what uh, the, the new series will be. So yeah, Ed, not this Thursday, but next Thursday, I plan to do a kind of episode zero where I talk about the series and like kind of lay out what it's all going to be. So hopefully I'll have a bit of a better explanation and kind of a nice, better way to describe it then. But hopefully it makes sense. It's just going to be me making some dungeons and hopefully it'll be a pretty chill time. But yeah, so that's what's coming. And that's 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 that. Uh, hopefully moving goes smoothly. <laughs> me too. I uh, I hate moving. It's one of my like least favorite things, but uh, I've already kind of been in the works these past couple weeks. But uh, yeah, these next like week and a half is gonna be a lot of moving, a lot of work stuff, but then it'll be done and I can't wait for it to be done. So yeah, hopefully my schedule will be a lot more consistent after that, but that's why I've had a bit of um, craziness with my schedule. But uh, I'm glad that series sounds like a cool concept. I hope it is, you know, it's gonna be a bit of a longer series. So, and I don't, I think if it gets, you know, if people like it, I'll probably, once I just finish the initial 15 episodes, I might just in the future just do an episode here or there of trying a new source or building a new dungeon for this system. And um, yeah, I don't anticipate it just being just the 15 episodes, but I think for the initial run, it will be. So yeah, that'll be that. And I guess I can also, I will tease out then if I'm already doing the next week's schedule, um, the video, or not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday, will be an RPG playthrough of me playing through Dreams and Machines, which I was supposed to do like three weeks ago. Uh, three weeks ago, I think, is when I was supposed to have a video come out. But then um, I just got a bit behind in my scheduling, so I had to push it back. And that's what I will be doing next Tuesday. So yeah, this Tuesday, Keyforge versus the Key Kraken. Nothing this Thursday, nothing this upcoming Sunday. Next Tuesday will be Dreams and Machines. And then next Thursday will hopefully be episode zero of the Let's Build a Dungeon series or whatever I'm going to call it. Right now, that's why I've been calling it in my head, but maybe I'll try to come up with something better and more catchy. So that's all. I'll wrap up the stream here. Hopefully y'all have a great week. And yeah, appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoyed the stream, of course, a like would be greatly, greatly appreciated. And yeah, hope y'all have a good one, and I'll see y'all on Tuesday for some Key Forge. See ya. See you, KDK. Hope you have a good week, and I'll probably see y'all when the move is over. It probably won't look too different, but.